Hello everyone, thank you for joining me again today. I've taken some time off uh, to handle some personal matters. Hopefully we can get back on track this week. And I appreciate everyone's patience and the sharing of the these videos to those that are interested in learning the truth about the Jehovah's Witnesses religion. If you are a Jehovah's Witness, I will never insult you, disparage you, or uh, denigrate anyone in your religion. The only thing that I do is try to be positive and show you where it is that me being an inactive witness where we have deviated or actually we had never really had the truth quote unquote um, but you know feel welcome and you know it might be you might find it very refreshing and uh, I hope you you uh, view it and enjoy it. So today we're talking about the uh, August 1st, 2013 Watchtower, which is discussing and talks about pornography, harmless or toxic. Now, it's good that the Watchtower and the organization tries to address this issue, but as you will see, it's sad because they do what they're trying to address, they're actually endorsing to you, to me, subconsciously. And you'll you'll see why I say that. Let's look at here, and then this is, you know, it talks about everything here. Let's look at this first picture. And many, many perhaps of you are familiar with this issue and it's I, I believe it's been addressed before on YouTube, but I'm not quite sure. But I, I, I've done a little bit of research in terms of why it's so important that um, this is brought up again and this is um, addressed um, because it's so vital. And it just demonstrates the depravity that the Jehovah's Witness leaders have uh, stooped to in terms of trying to get members to subconsciously do the opposite of what they're supposedly trying to warn them about. And this is pornography. And I'll show you why. Just give me an opportunity to explain to you and show to you. You know, here you have a gentleman, obviously, you know, I don't know if it's a looks like it's a bookstore or a video store, whatever it may be, and he's you know, he's probably, you know, looking at, you know, porn titles or whatnot. But, you know, it, this starts off, the world today is awash with pornography. Very true. It is. It's so easily accessible, sadly, you know, now with the Internet. But look at this gentleman here. And this is what, you know, this is what really, really upsets me about the Jehovah's Witness leaders because it's so blatant you know it's so blatant just keep keep an eye on here on this gentleman here but we're gonna address something else here we're gonna go to the evolution of modern Satanism in the United States and this is a time in a time uh, issue back in 72 okay if you're familiar with Amazon Dot com, you know that their arrow that they have that points from the A to the Z is really a, a, um, a phallus, a penis. And why is that? Because Satan loves um, that we worship our organs and use them in a way that is not respectful towards the creator god and why do i say this look at what this says here it says through the 1960s and 70s saw the introduction of several or other con concepts called satanism from actual religious belief to a credo used to justify criminality the church of satan did not fade away 
In 1978, the U.S. Army even included the group in the Manual of Religious Requirements and Practices delivered to its hundreds of chaplains. Time mentioned that the manual explained that Church of Satan devote devotees might need candles, a bell, a chalice, elixir, elixir, a sword, a gong, parchment, and a model phallus. And now, why? Because in Satanism, the phallus is worship. Okay, it's worship. So, you know, the interesting thing is that something that the witnesses, the leaders are trying to warn about, they are being deliberate in pushing it forward. Many of you can go on YouTube and you can see, and I, I, I'm, I'm not sure about this reference, but I think it's the Fantasia um, a cover video cover from Disney that had a phallus, had a penis right in the, in the um, in the cover, and I can uh, I can look for that. I should have brought it, but um, I took this image because there is images within this image here of this gentleman standing here, and this is doctored. Okay, this is this is um, G CGI computer generated image and this is probably a real person and they just you know put put it on this body that's CGI uh, but take note of this image because we're gonna be looking at that image not that image there we're gonna be looking at not those we're gonna be looking at this image as well we're gonna be dissecting it and that's it so I've taken those images, okay, and I've put them in a folder, in a file here, okay, and I want to address this. Now, look at this here, let's go to the beginning here, let's go back to the guy here, okay, standing. Many, perhaps, are you already caught it or familiar, but notice this here. This is a phallus, this is a penis, and you can see the, the male organ, you know, uh, and obviously we know what this is. This is supposed to represent semen, okay? Now what I did is I tried to find a, and this is a messenger bag that this gentleman has. This is a messenger bag. I tried to scour the, the internet to try to find something that reflected this this little part right here and remember this is computer generated okay so that means that this can be manipulated to where it doesn't look like this okay but why is why are these images so important okay let me address this first okay there is um, researchers okay from a uh, an article that appeared in 2011 in Medicine and Health and Neuroscience. Researchers from the University of Glasgow have shown that when parts of our vision are blocked, the brain steps in to fill in the blanks. Okay, The team from the Institute of Neuroscience and Psychology, Psycholo Psychology conducted a series of experiments that showed how our brains predict what cannot be seen by drawing our, on our previous experiences to build up an accurate picture. The results show that our brains do not rely solely on what is shown to the eyes in order to see. Instead, the brain constructs a complex prediction. Dr. Lars Muckley from the University's Institute of Neuroscience and Psychology said, we are continuously anticipating what we will see, hear, or feel next. If parts of an image are obstructed, we will have precise precise expectation of what the whole object will look like. When direct input from the eye is obstructed, the brain still predicts what is likely to be present behind the object by using some of the other inputs to come up with best guesses. Now you can note that here the brain is processing this, even though it's looking at this gentleman here, it's processing this right here, and also this area here, okay? See, effectively, the, the article continues, effectively, our brains construct an, incredible, construct an incredibly complex jigsaw puzzle using any pieces it can access to. 
These are provided by the context in which we see them, our memories, and of senses. The results of this study was published in the journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. Okay, So basically what it's saying is that our brain takes in this whole image, okay, but it also subconsciously recognizes what this is and recognizes this bulge, okay? And what it does is it fills it in, but on a subconscious level. In other words, your conscience, your, when you're aware, you're, you're, you're aware of this gentleman standing here, you, the only thing that your conscience brain is taking in is this gentleman standing here looking at this, uh, this, th these items here get that back here at the wall okay it's not processing this but your subconscious is okay and that's what's evil about it because your subconscious is way more powerful than your conscience will ever be your subconscious regulates all body functions your breathing your your uh, your eyes your blood flow your regeneration of skin your uh, organs your liver your uh, heart your your movements um, anything every your hearing pretty much everything you can think of your subconscious is handling for you and you don't for example you don't have to tell your heart to beat your subconscious does that for you automatically you don't have to tell yourself to take uh, one step you tell your brain your brain tells your subconscious your your and and uh, you know you automatically move your arm move your leg whatever it may be but let me quote you from another, and this comes from ScienceDaily.com, and I quote, University of Arizona doctoral degree candidate Jay Sanguinetti has authored a new study published online in the journal Psychological Science that indicates that the brain processes and understands visual input that we may never consciously perceive, okay? And the article goes on to say, and this is the Dr. Sanguinetti uh, speaking, or candidate Sanguinetti. This was from what? This was 2013. I'm sure he's graduated already, but it, it was in conjunction with other doctors. It says we were asking the question of whether the brain was processing the meaning of the objects that are on the outside of these silhouettes. Sanguinetti said, the specific question was does the brain process those hidden shapes to the level of meaning even when the subject doesn't consciously see them the answer sanguinetti's data indicates is yes study participants brain waves indicated that even if a person never consciously recognized the shapes on the outside of the image their brains still process those shapes to the level of understanding their meaning and the article goes on to say, this is huge. We have neural evidence that the brain is processing the shape and its meaning of the hidden images in the silhouettes we show to participants in our study. Images were shown to Sanguinetti study participants for only 170 milliseconds, yet their brains were able to complete the complex processes necessary to interpret the meaning of the hidden objects. There are a lot of processes that happen in the brain to help us interpret all the complexity that hits our eyeballs, Sanguinetti said. The brain is able to process and interpret this information very quickly. So again, this just goes to show that these images that are we aren't consciously picking up our subconscious is very very well aware aware of it okay so it is processing that those all of these images but let's get now let's go here to the images that i've put up obviously you know what this is obviously you know what this is but notice this one too here notice this bulge right here see that 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 doesn't need to be there that doesn't need to be there. Why do I say that? Look at this. You see anything here? You see a bulge popping up anywhere here? You see that? 
His shirt is wrinkled here, yes. But notice this gentleman here, smooth. And this is a, a CGI picture. Why couldn't they just smooth this out and make it look smooth? This is another CGI. This is a computer generated image. Why can't it just be smooth? Because they want you to subconsciously, what's here, what's down here in his lap that we're, that the brain cannot see, but yet can also construct, obviously his genital area. And what comes up from the genital, genital, genital area? We know what that is. Again, here, this is a bulge, okay? And you can almost see here, you know, what this is. It almost looks like the Amazon arrow, you know? But, you know, interestingly enough, here, you don't have a bulge. Look at this. Here, no bulge. Here, no bulge. Here, no bulge. Here, bulge. That is nuts. And this is a computer generated image. This can easily be edited and, and cleaned up to where there is, and it looks like this, to where it doesn't become offensive. But this is deliberate, ladies and gentlemen. This is deliberate. Again, this gentleman, no bulge here. But again, let's look at the messenger bag because this is the one that really gets me. I mean, it's so blatant. I mean, it's almost popping off the screen. Look at that. Look at the shape here on this corner, okay? I could not find one, okay? I could not find one. And these are real live images, okay? This is a computer-generated image. And yet they couldn't modify it and edit it to where it wouldn't register in the subconscious. Look at that. There is no penis appearing here. And yet it is there. And of course, uh, you can pretty much understand this here. Look at this guy's expression. I know it's supposed to be a prayer, but why put the lady here? Why put this woman here to where she is, you know, on her on this guy's lap? When have you ever seen a wife of someone praying? in whatever situation nowadays pretty much on the person's lap as they're praying and again this picture here is designated and it's it's it's, it's illustrated in this way to give the subconscious a perverse image you know it never ceases to amaze me the pervert nature of the Jehovah's Witness leaders. Now you may say, oh, well, you know, you're seeing things and your mind is making all this up. No, you can pretty much see that I have tried to gather pictures from the internet to show, okay? And I could not find, and I'm sure there are pictures where you can see bulges uh, in men's standing, you know, but the thing is that these are CGI pictures and you can easily edit and revise these pictures so they do not show these items, these things here. These uh, penises and genital areas and, and assumptions here and you know, but why? Why does the world do that? Why do people that serve or want to serve Satan and, and are serving his, you know, Satan, why do they do that? Because they're serving, they're not serving God. They want this imagery, imagery in the members' minds because they're not doing God's, God's bidding. God, you know, they're not serving God. You know, we know who they're serving. And that's sad. That is what I wanted to show you guys today. It's um, it's getting worse. It's getting worse because it's not only the Jehovah's Witness leaders, but it's actually everywhere else. You see it in print. You see it on TV. You see it. Uh, you can even they even talk about it on the radio. 
and it's all about sex. Think about this. Take a 1950s commercial for, let's say, a burger or a car, whatever it may be, and try using that in today's TV world and you'll be laughed. You'll be laughed out of the industry because we've, as a society, we've become so desensitized to sexuality that we take it as normal. But what happens is that later on, our subconscious, when we're asleep and we're, you know, we're not, you know, we're in a deep sleep or whatever it means, those feelings come to the, come to the, um, come to the forefront they come to the surface and then that's when we start acting out and wanting to uh, fulfill these erotic images and desires that have been embedded deliberately in our subconscious minds and that's exactly how Satan works because it's all about Satan knows that one of the biggest human weaknesses is sex, power. So he can control people that way. And the Jehovah's Witness leaders are just helping him because they're doing their bidding. Don't believe me, believe the images and believe, research the, uh, the articles that I've cited you, research them. You know, there's, uh, you can go to sciencedaily.com, it's, and the title is Your Brain Sees Things You Don't, November 13th, from the University of Arizona. And the other one is, uh, or you can just Google, Your Brain Sees What Your Eyes Don't, and um, it'll pretty much tell you, show you everything. But this is deliberate, ladies and gentlemen, this is all deliberate because Satan is hard at work within the Jehovah's Witnesses organization and I don't mean that the members I mean that the leaders and those others that are aware of it because it's not only the leaders it's actually it's bigger than that because the leaders don't publish this they don't have the CGI the computer programming um, you know graphic design skills to do this but they know. They know. I thank you for joining me again today. And I hope to have another video tomorrow, following day, and the following day, and the following day. Let's keep going. And I uh, thank you. Please share this with friends, um, people that have read this magazine, and show it to them. It's, you know, it's, it's unfortunate, so graphic in nature, but that is the reality of what has become of the Jehovah's Witnesses leaders and what they're trying to impose subconsciously in us. Get them to the light that can only be found in Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank you for joining me again today. God bless.